see. Well, what's up guys? I'm back. I uh, haven't made a video in a long time. I film stuff, but I haven't been able to edit. And I just recently built my own PC. I made it for gaming, but obviously I can put editing software on there as well. And so, I had downloaded, uh, may or may not have been illegally, but the, um, full versions of, uh, Sony Vegas Pro 11 and 12. I don't remember which one I was able to get to work completely. I stopped, lady. But, um, I couldn't get my videos to render to be able to upload them. So, last night, I downloaded, um, just got Windows Movie Maker and I just put a sample video up just to make sure I could figure everything out, get it to work. Excuse my voice as well, I'm a, a tad bit sick. My nose is all stuffy. Nice nose piercing, homo. But yeah, I'll be able to edit and upload videos now. Finally. Again. I don't know where I'm going either. I'm just going out for a ride to make a video. Um, as you can see, I don't have the regular mirrors that I had here before. I bought a set of two. It came as a pair of bar end mirrors, and I love them. It's a little less convenient, obviously, having to look down instead of just straight forward, basically, from the old mirrors, but I could not see out of the old mirrors, and so having these things is awesome because it gives you such a, a wide view. Visor's a bit dirty. I also got a new jacket, a nice Danies. Um, I got it at uh, the MotoGP races when they were down here. They were in Monterey in July. Cycle Gear had a huge clearance on a bunch of shit. Or not clearance, but a sale. And I picked up this jacket it retails at like 325 or something like that and i got it for 200 
that's good. A nice deal. And I am actually in the process of trying to sell this bike. I'm not going to say what kind of bike I'm looking at getting because I want to make put put time and effort into making a nice video to reveal it if I can figure out how to do all the the awesome things in the editing software that I have but all I can say is it is a sexy motherfucker definitely a very very good looking bike um, it's my dad's co-worker his bike it's a 2000 um, he just had it repainted within the last month uh, probably a week week and a half ago two weeks sometime around there it's just been put all back together all the fairings and gas tank and all that good stuff but oh it looks so good and I'm so stoked about getting it the downside to the bar and mirrors is how much wider it makes my bike so I have to be a lot more choosy about when I lane split but oh well losing a little bit of lane splitting is worth the extra safety of having mirrors that fucking voice cracks see I'm sick um, yes losing a little bit of lane splitting is worth the extra safety of being able to see behind me when I change lanes at higher speeds, so. Not a big deal. But I'm very stoked about selling this bike. Because this is, selling this thing is where the bulk of the money that I'm buying the other bike is coming from. But a little update about where I've been, what I've been doing lately, is some school. And I was working full time, but I, I'm at a new job now where I don't work as much. Probably about half the time. And I was joining the Navy, but that fell through due to medical reasons um, I was ready to go for any of you that have been through this you don't need to come out into my lane woman for any of you that have gone through this um, you go to the recruiting office and they ask you all kinds of questions do some paperwork and then uh, you go and you take a test called the ASVAB which is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery and uh, depending on how you score on that uh, it lets you pick jobs so if you score really high the highest you can get is 99 it's not a percentage of how you do on the questions it's a percentile of how other people have done on it and so the highest you can get is 99 uh, when you go into the recruiting office you take a, a really shortened version just to kind of see where you're at and I scored a 74 on that which in, in my opinion that's average but apparently that's really decent um, my recruiter said if I score like that on the actual ASVAB, I'll have a, a very good choice of jobs called rates in the Navy. Um, and then, so you do some paperwork in there just to answer questions about 
Do you always have migraine headaches? Um, ever had surgery? Broken bones? Just a whole bunch of general questions, which I mean, you could basically answer yes to everything, but you want to say no to pretty much everything. Um, and so i had gone in and out of there a couple times. Um, some of the few, th a few of the major things that I needed for medical was when I was younger, I had a whole bunch of stomach problems. Um, my stomach didn't produce the enzymes to break down glucose. And so it would just kind of build up in my stomach and cause pain and make me throw up all the time. And I also have acid reflux. So I was, I had an endoscopy done probably when I was 12, 13, around that age. And uh, they discovered a hiatal hernia and like some erosion, like the start of an ulcer. But I got that cleared. I had to get medical documents for that. That got cleared. I broke my foot when I was in eighth grade, but didn't have to have any surgery and it healed up perfect. So got that cleared. Um, thought I had asthma. Wasn't sure if I was diagnosed with it. Turns out I wasn't. It's just when I, I uh, exercise in the cold, my chest gets pretty tight, but so that was cleared. So I had no problems going into MEPS, which is the military, I believe it's enlistment processing station service. I don't, I don't remember, but um, so everything was all good going into MEPS. Uh, I went in one day to take the actual ASVAB. That building is the worst. You can't use cell phones and everyone in there just having a bad time so you don't really have anyone to talk to. So you're just kind of sitting there and I got there a little after two. Um, probably didn't go into the room to take the test until 3.30ish. So I was sitting there for an hour and a half bored out of my mind. And then you go into a room full of computers with a bunch of other people. No cell phones, no calculators in there. Um, obviously you don't want to do anything that makes you look like you're cheating in a building full of government personnel and military personnel. And then I take the test. Um, didn't think I did all that well. It's pretty tough they word things confusing kind of like DMV tests and all kinds of um, areas of education science math mechanics um, word knowledge reading comprehension shit like that and so I didn't think I did all that well and then you finish the test they print out your scores right there and you call your recruiter and go home. Um, I scored 81, which is really well, and qualified for the nuclear program, which is the highest job that you can qualify for in the Navy. So, my recruiter was excited about that, obviously. And um, so the next day I was scheduled to go through MEPS, get my physical done, um, blood tests, urinalysis, hearing and eyesight tests to make sure you're qualified for everything. Um, and so you get there at 6 in the morning and um, I'm sitting there going through all that stuff and I get to... They, there's one part where they bring you in a room fill out more paperwork, you answer more medical questions. I was told by my recruiters, I mean, the only things wrong with you are the four things that you got cleared already for, so don't 
worry about anything. And so you get in there and they scare you into admitting other things that you could possibly be hiding. They tell you if you're hiding anything and they find out that you'll be dishonorably discharged, um, fines, lose any bonuses that you got while signing your enlistment contract, and possible jail time. So I recently, my stomach issues subsided probably sophomore year in high school. And then recently I had been having some issues where I was constantly having heartburn, like every day, all day basically. And I knew that I had acid reflux, so that contributed to it for most of my life. But recently it was just all the time. And so I went to the doctor, he gave me Prilosec basically. I had a choice between Prilosec or this other medication called Omeprazole, which was the same thing basically, but it was cheaper to go with Omeprazole. And I had thought it was prescription, but it wasn't, it was over the counter. So there was a part of the paperwork where they ask about any medication you're taking. I panicked and wrote it down. That fucked me over. Uh, I went through everything else. You carry all these, all your documents with you, bring them to the next station what, and whatnot. And I got to the doctor. They, there's this room where you go in, you strip down to your boxers, and you sit and wait for the doctor to call you in. And he goes over your paperwork and touches your balls and looks at your butthole. And <laughs> no joke, they check for hemorrhoids. Um, and then... So he asked me about the omeprazole, and I told him recently I had heartburn, um, I got prescribed the medication, I took it a little bit, completely changed my diet. I love spicy food, I don't eat that as often, um, I eat healthier, and haven't been taking the medication anymore. I wonder what's up that way. And then uh, you're on the wrong side. Um, that scared me, because I wasn't looking. Uh, where was I? Yeah, um, I told him wasn't really taking the medication anymore. Um, and I haven't been having the heartburn problems, so I didn't need it. He said, okay, I still need you to go and get any medical documents that had to do with this medication from your doctor and bring those back for us to review to see if you're fit for the military. So at this point, I was pretty upset. That day I was gonna sign my contract, pick my rate, and find out my ship date for boot camp. And I was so excited for boot camp and to join the military. This is the first time I've ever seen a horse here. I always see signs about people with horses, but that's the first time I've actually seen one. Uh. Yeah, I was really upset. So I got sent home early, and in that building, I, I was like, fuck it, I'm taking out my phone. I called my doctor, and I set up an appointment for, I don't know, two hours later. Went home, and I went to that, and then got all the, the paperwork. Well, actually, I didn't. I got, um, my doctor wrote a letter saying, I prescribed this to Ryan. Um, since then he's changed his diet, I haven't needed to see him, he doesn't take the medication anymore, should not cause any problems being in the military, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he is okay. And then I had to go fill out a form and request medical documents, they had to print it out and I told them to email it to me. And I get a call within the next few days saying it's ready to be picked up. And I'm like, all right, well, what the hell? I requested it to be emailed. And he's like, oh, well, that's not what I had here. And so I was unable to go pick them up myself. My mom works by the hospital that I go to. So she was able to run over there, which is also by the recruiting office. So she went and picked it up and brought it to my recruiter. And... Um, they faxed it over to MEPS, 
heard nothing for a month. So at this point I was like, I was still upset. Um, and finally I come home one night from soccer practice and I have a letter to me from the Department of Defense and I open it up and it says that I've been disqualified for gastroesophageal reflux disease slash heartburn not just from the Navy from all armed forces of the United States and right there I was crushed I was so upset because if I had not mentioned the medication, I would have been in. And so the next day I had class, the day after I brought the letter in to the recruiting office, hoping that they would be able to sign a waiver for me or find some way around getting disqualified for fucking heartburn. And None of the recruiters that are normally there were there. There was uh, one of the, I, I don't remember what she said. She was uh, a chief in the Navy, one of the like district commanders or something like that. And so I told her what had happened and showed her the letter. She made a photocopy of it and had me write my name and number on top and said she would give it to my recruiter when he came back and he would contact me. This was uh, probably early October. It's mid-November now. Haven't heard shit. So that's out of the books. And I'm pretty upset about it. But whatever. I mean, if they're going to disqualify me for something so ridiculous and something that seems so minuscule, fuck them. But now I just gotta find out what else I wanna do with my life and go from here. There's a fucking GoPro truck right there. I'm gonna go check that out. Why not, right? Got some tits on the back. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I wonder if there's anyone in there looking at me right now. What the hell's this kid doing over here? Got a big James Stewart on the side. Surf a girl on the back. It's pretty cool. I should film an outro. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, now I have time to make more videos I have software that I can edit these videos so I'll be uploading more and I'll be back hopefully very very soon Ugh, very soon with a reveal video of the new bike that I'm gonna be getting cannot wait for that so subscribe comment like favorite share all that good stuff with all of your buddies that are into motorcycling. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.